Welcome to AFSPA Talks, a production of the American Foreign Service Protective Association. Each week, we deliver informative health and wellness topics you want to know about, so be sure to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast channel. And if you have any questions about content discussed in this episode, ask them at AFSPA Live, our live Q&A session streaming every last Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. Eastern Time on youtube.com slash AFSPA Cares. Now here's your host, Chief Operating Officer Kyle Longton. Hi, and welcome to another episode of AFSPA Talks. I'm your host, Kyle Longton, and our other host today is... Maddie Norton. Um, Maddie. Glad to be here. Uh, as always, I'm glad I'm glad we're here together. And mm-hmm. Maddie, as this um, episode comes out, it's open season. It is the first day, November 13th. Yeah, and it, it goes on for four weeks. We've got till December 11th to make changes to their health insurance. Although if you've got FSBP, maybe you don't want to make a change. Yeah, think about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> um, you've also got this time to look at your federal employee dental and vision insurance program enrollment. So those dental and vision programs. And um, for the flexible spending accounts through the FSA feds program. So just a reminder to re-enroll in those, that program, the FSA feds every year with your health insurance and the dental and vision program. If you like what you've got, you don't have to take any action. You'll have the exact same plan next year, but FSA feds, you got to take action every year. Don't lose the money that's in there. Make sure you re-enroll if you need to. But man, we've got a lot of, we, ASPA, has, have a lot of events coming up over the next month or so. Um, I wonder if you could tell a little bit about those. Yeah, we have, um, you're doing lots of webinars. We have two scheduled for Monday at 6 a.m. Well, it is 6 a.m. now, if once this is going out. <laughs> um, and I think 12 p.m. And you have them throughout the open season. Uh, and then, of course, we have ASPA Live at the end of November, which will be on open season particularly on the prescription drug plan that we will discuss a little bit later. And if you want to see everything that's going on this um, open season time, you can go to aspa.org slash events and register for webinars and make sure you're all up to date on everything that we are doing to make sure you're informed and can make the right changes to your health insurance or whatever you may want to do. Right. And and I'll just encourage everybody also look for any announcements from your, your HR office or even in some yes. cases your union. Um, we've got teams who are out traveling this November, uh, particularly this this week of November 13th, and um, and coming around. There also will be some of us visiting health fairs throughout open season that are hosted. Those seem to be fewer and fewer these days um, with the in in person, but um, we'll be at some. We'll also have some some presence at virtual things, uh, virtual events, as well as the virtual benefits fair offered by. Um, what is that by long-term care partners, but, but online in partnership with OPM, I believe it is. So yes. look for that information. We'll have live chats four days throughout open season when those are offered. So lots of, lots of time to get your questions answered. And Maddie, we're doing something a little different today. We don't actually have a guest besides you and me. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're going to, going to mix it up with, um, you serving as, as our, our host and, and questioner. So I'm just going to leave it to you for now. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I turned 26 recently, so I have feel like I've dived a lot into health insurance recently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if I didn't already know a lot from working at ASPA, but um, we just had our employee benefits zoomed going over what ASPA employees are doing um, and like what our premiums are and things. So I know our members are going to want to know first, what's the cost? Are the FB, FSBP premiums changing this year? Or next year, I guess. Yeah, they are. So going into 2024, um, for enrollees, the self and family premiums are going up five and a half percent. So that's the change that that enrollees will see. The self plus one premium is actually going up six percent. And I'll just mention that the overall premium for self plus one actually only went up five percent, but because the government's contribution to the self and to the family enrollments is weighted more. Self plus one ends up having a higher enrollee increase, but um, we'll come back to that in just a minute. I just want to note that biweekly premiums are as follows: for self, it'll be eighty-two dollars and sixty-two cents. That's the biweekly. Self plus one will be two hundred eleven dollars and forty cents, and the family will be two hundred four dollars and thirty-eight cents. 
And I have had a lot of questions. I went to a recent health fair at uh, the strategic system programs. And, you know, a lot of people asked, why is self plus one more than family when there's potentially more people in the family, of course, and then compared to self plus one? Sure. So um, I just want to first start off by saying that this has been the case for FSVP for all but one year since the self plus one um, enrollment option was introduced back in for the 2016 benefit year. Um, and this year, once again, as with last year, about a third of the plans in the federal employee health benefits program have a self plus one enrollee premium that is higher than the family. <clears throat> Excuse me. So basically, the, what we're looking at here is that the overall premiums for self plus one and family are very, very close. And in fact, the overall premium, the plus one is slightly less than family. However, the Office of Personnel Management or OPM weights the contribution to the family enrollment more. So there's a little bit more government contribution going to the family compared to the self plus one. And that ends up in the self plus one costing the enrolling more. But the good news is that two-party families can enroll in family enrollment and save themselves some money. Um, and so I encourage you to, to look at doing that this year. Um, check the guidance from either your employment or retirement office on how to make that change. All right. And I know that you don't just have to worry about premiums when it comes to health insurance. So what about other costs? You know, co-insurance, co-pays, deductibles. What all does that have to do? What are the costs yeah, like? So that? that's that's a great question. Like the deductible remains the same. It it remains low at three hundred dollars for the self only enrollment and six hundred for the family or self plus one, and that has been the case for many years. Actually, I think since about twenty sixteen as well. The cost share um, formulas, you know, the the co insurance and so forth, are not changing either. When a member goes to an in network provider or an overseas provider, just quick note that we consider all overseas providers at the in-network rate. Uh, we pay 100% for inpatient hospitalization, preventive services, and maternity care. For other services, pretty much most other services, um, FSBP pays 90% after the calendar year deductible. And that's really, we're thinking there about like outpatient and other professional services. Uh, all, for, for folks in the US, if you're having labs done, if they are done at Quest or LabCorp, we're paying 100% for that as well. And we're not changing, you mentioned mentioned co-pays, um, which we should show up under prescription benefits. You know, we're not changing the cost sharing under prescription benefits for our, our high option for our, our plan. Um, you mentioned we've got some other options under the prescription drug plan um, that's coming out. We'll talk more about that later. That's, that's for uh, people age 65 and older. And finally, because I do get this question more than, than I used to when we're um, talking to people about costs, the plan's catastrophic out-of-pocket maximum um, is remaining the same. It's five thousand for the self only, and that's that's the in-network rate, and seven thousand for family or self plus one. Again, the in-network um, there. All right, so we've covered everything cost-wise, right? Well, actually, I, I don't want to bury the lead when we're talking <laughs> about this. Um, so I just want to be clear when we're talking about some costs and and also some of our coverage. So. Um, this is this has been as I've been out meeting with members. This is sort of a high point. Um, we are actually increasing our allowance for our our alternative benefits for massage therapy, for acupuncture, and chiropractic services for 2023 and for many years. The maximum we've paid per visit has been sixty dollars. But beginning January first, 2024, we will cover up to seventy five dollars per visit for each of those services and members. Uh, you know, can can use these. It's 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 covered for every member covered under the plan. I know that when I told a lot of people at the health fair, uh, some people even jumped for joy. Uh, <laughs> they were so excited to hear that. So that does mean that seventy five dollars per visit for up to fifty visits for each service every year for every member. So I'm sure even more people will be glad to hear about that. Um, mm -hmm. I know that the members I talked to said that. That's why they love our plan. <laughs> that's one of the many reasons. Um, I know that I would love, that's just about a massage yeah. every week for a year. So like, that's incredible. Um, but let's move on to other benefit changes. What has changed since last year? Okay, so the biggest change I think, um, and this is somewhat program wide, but I wanna focus on what FSBP is doing is with infertility. I am so glad, I mean, 
So glad to announce that we are making some big improvements in our coverage for infertility services. So for 2023, we were the only fee-for-service plan in the federal program to offer any coverage for artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization or IVF. That's great, but our calendar year maximum on that coverage total per person was only $5,000. So starting in 2024, we are offering coverage for the medical services and the prescription drugs for both artificial insemination and IVF. And there are no limits on the coverage. So this is a huge change. This is a huge improvement. And, and it's something that many members have been asking about in my decade at Aspen, I think before that. So I'm so glad that we're able to bring this coverage to them. That is incredible. But are there any requirements for members to access these benefits? Yeah, there are. And and it's important. The first is that all services for infertility care must receive prior approval in the U.S. and um, when you receive the services outside the U.S. So this is one of the few services where we have a requirement for prior approval overseas. We do have a dedicated prior approval line for these services. There's a, a national team of excellence where all they do is support infertility cases. So they don't work solely for FSBP, but they only work on infertility and they have information about our benefits. But we'll include that number in the show notes for people who are interested. Please note that you know if you call now, they're gonna they're gonna provide you the 2023 benefits. Um, but these new benefits come into force on 2024. Additionally, there are there is support available um, from the plan from what are known as fertility advocates. So as you're starting to consider what your options may be, this may be your first phone call to to call them and um, get some advice, get some information about what the benefits are, how they work, what the steps are that are included. Also, what the plan's definition for infertility is before you can, so you meet that before you can start accessing benefits. We'll also include the number for the fertility advocates in the show notes. I also just want to note that if you are in the U.S. and you're receiving uh, these infertility services in the U.S., We do require that members go to an Institutes of Excellence infertility provider for the services. Um, The care managers, when you call for that, that either the fertility advocates or for the the prior approval, um, can provide you with that information, how to find someone in your area. Perfect. And these are significant changes in infertility. And we have the dedicated care managers and fertility advocates, which members can access across the world, but are there any other support programs available? Yes, we are. We are providing a new program for next year. It's not solely for infertility, but that's sort of how we came to find the program. Uh, And it is rare, I mean, that we come across a potential partner that checks so many boxes in terms of meeting the needs of our unique membership worldwide and, and, and care in so many different countries. But I am delighted to report that Maven Clinic does check those boxes. So Maven is an online clinic focused primarily on women and families. They operate in more than 170 countries. And this is through their online interface, through their app. They provide support for family um, uh, foundation and and whether that means uh, infertility treatments or adoption services, they can connect our members with support and resources. And they have um, people on staff who have knowledge of the laws and requirements in various countries because uh, you know, just traveling around and talking to members, we, we've learned that not every country offers in um, you know, infertility services to everybody. Sometimes you have to be a citizen. Sometimes you must be married. You must be part of a heterosexual couple, mm-hmm. um, things like that. And the same may come into to play with, um, with, with adoption laws. And, and while we don't provide any financial benefit within the plan about Adoption, this is something where they can at least provide some guidance and some expertise when you're looking at uh, family formation. So more importantly, you know, Maven is offering actual virtual care. You can connect care navigators as well as providers for your needs. So it's not just here's some articles to read, you know, here's a webinar to watch from time to time, all of which is great. But this is you can actually connect with a provider and their support goes beyond the family formation to include support during maternity during those first months of parenthood um, and supporting new babies in the home and and changes in the home and also ongoing care throughout life even into uh, perimenopause and menopause so we are so excited and proud to be offering this service to 
FSBP members for free beginning in January 2024. Yeah, and this is so good. And it's so nice to expand on women's health care, especially. Um, and I'm proud to work for ASPA and have a connection and partnership like that. And I know that we're working on a podcast with Maven that we hope to get out this month. And um, we're going to give our members some more information about it. In the meantime, what other changes to the plan are there? So you know, we are improving our surgical benefits for gender affirming care. Um, the, the improved coverage will better align with the recommendations published by WPATH, uh, which sort of sets the standard. Uh, those came out in 2022. I'll just also note that gender affirming surgery is another service that requires prior approval, both in the U.S. and overseas. Once again, we've got a dedicated team to support members for this um, form of treatment as well. Well, it can include that number in the show notes as well. Perfect. And before we really dive into the prescription drug changes that I know our members have lots of questions about, um, are there any other changes of note? Just two that I want to call out quickly. Uh, we've included language in the preventive services section of our brochure to note that FSBP covers an annual mental wellness screening. So this typically takes place with your primary care provider, maybe at your annual physical where they may ask questions about um, your feelings around anxiety, depression, and, and other other similar feelings. Um, and this has always been a service that's been covered by FSBP, but we're making that explicit next year. Also, we are removing the exclusions for certain types of counseling. Notably, we have had an exclusion for marital or relationship counseling for many years. In 2024, that exclusion is gone, so we will cover um that the plan will cover those types of counseling services beginning in 2024. And those changes may seem small, but they're super, super important, especially when it comes to mental health care and mental wellness. And that's something that we love to support and promote. Now let's finally talk about the new Medicare Part D prescription drug program, or as we like to call it, the PDP. Um, we've had some recent emails and a recent webinar with Express Scripts, and we've been hearing a lot from members about this. Yeah, we have, and for good reason, and, and I'm always delighted to hear from members um, and, and appreciate their feedback. Um, this is a change that has the potential to affect a lot of our members. For most, though, there are two main changes that they will experience. They'll receive a new prescription drugs only ID card, and they'll see lower out-of-pocket costs when they fill their prescriptions. But before I wanna go much further, I wanna be clear that I'm providing, you know, w w as we talk here, it's only a brief summary. I want to encourage our listeners to go back to listen to our October 23rd episode where we did an in-depth overview of the PDP with someone um, from Express Scripts who's, who's sort of one of their experts in the PDP space. And I know one of the most frequent questions we've been getting is, you know, why did FSBP choose to do auto enrollment or do yeah. an auto enrollment? Yeah, for members. Sure. So it's auto enrollment with the, the option to opt out. Um, so I just want to note that FSBP has over 12,000 members. And I think I'm actually, that, that number is a little lower, um, maybe even closer to 13,000, but 12,000 members who are eligible for Medicare. Whether they take it or not, they are eligible for it. They're at that age range. And the vast majority of those members will see savings under this program. Most and I, I just want to note that that most will not see an additional or increased premium. It's This is included under your Foreign Service Benefit Plan enrollment. They will only see the lower out-of-pocket costs. Uh, we did not want our members to miss out on the savings and the wider network of pharmacies they can use for their prescriptions. So we did the auto enrollment. I also note that the, the PDP does mean savings for the plan overall. This, this is will be lower costs on the plan side, not just the out-of-pocket costs for the members. We're, we're sharing those savings. All those savings come back to FSBP, and they allow us to keep premiums lower overall for all members of the plan year after year. We, you know, our, I, we mentioned before that our, our increase is 5.5% um, for next year. That's lower than the plan-wide average of 7.7%. Um, and we've been lower than the plan-wide average for years and years because we're able to bring all of these savings together to benefit all of our members. So why would someone want or not want to enroll in the PDP? Yeah, so there, there's a, I just want to start with a quick couple quick notes of who will not be affected by the P PDP at this time. So members 
under the age of 65. This is only for those who are eligible for Medicare. Also, even if you are over age 65, if you are living outside the U.S., so you have a true international address, or if you you have a DPO, FPO, or APO address that is based outside the U.S., you should not um, be auto-enrolled. Um, also, members over the age of 65 who are not eligible for Medicare Part A or Part B also should not see auto-enrollment under this because it is tied to your, your eligibility for one, either of those programs. Now, if someone is eligible, there are a couple reasons why they may wish to opt out. The most common that we're hearing from people and, and that makes sense is that their income could hit the threshold for the income-related monthly adjustment amount, or IRMA. Uh, Medicare looks at your income two years ago. So for 2024, they're looking back at your 2022 Modified Adjusted Gross Income, or um, MAGI, or MAGI, whichever you prefer. So if your uh, MAGI was under $103,000 for an individual or $206,000 for married couple filing jointly, you will pay nothing more for the Part D enrollment. It's included in your Foreign Service Benefit Plan. If your income is was above that in 2022, you will be assessed a monthly amount for Medicare Part B. And that monthly amount is based on your income. There's various tiers, and it ranges from $12.90 per month going up to $81 per month for individuals making $500,000 or couples making $750,000 or more per year. So we have a link that, that will go to that um, that chart that shows the breakdown. It's the, the last chart on that website from Medicare that will show you that. But for most people, the savings that someone would see under the PDP may not be, an, I, I'm sorry, um, the, for, for most the savings would be enough um, that, that they'll see in their out-of-pocket costs would be enough um, to, to offset you know, that first level, maybe even the second level of additional premium. But for others, particularly from that highest tier, the savings may not be enough. You may, you may be, if you're a married couple and looking at $81 per person per month and you don't take that many prescription drugs, it may not make sense for you. So um, that could lead people to opt out. But there is more information on this at aspa.org slash PDP. There's also information there about how to opt out and a dedicated member at Express Script to get more information on coverage for prescription drugs, as well as for um, pharmacies. And I also just want to mention, um, still go back and listen to that Medicare PDP uh, that we did, but this is a, we, we are creating a wraparound plan. So there are certain drugs that are not covered under uh, Medicare, but they are covered under FSBP. Um, those drugs will still be covered under this PDP that we're putting together. We're creating wraparound coverage. So if you're taking a drug now, you should still have access to it under the um, the new plan. All right. And Kyle, I know you mentioned earlier the Medicare Advantage plan. Are there any changes to that this year? So I just want to be clear, the PDP is completely separate from the Medicare Advantage plan. The PDP is for people who are not enrolled in the Medicare Advantage plan, for those who are enrolled in the, um, in the FSBP high option. Now, starting in 2023, we did launch a Medicare Advantage plan plus Part D coverage um, in partnership with Aetna. I was skeptical. I thought, okay, we'll offer it. But I, I was thinking maybe we'd see you know, 100, maybe 200 people. We actually saw more than 500 who enrolled and have stuck with it for the, the course of the year, and it works for them. Um, now, it's not for everybody, but it does offer good comprehensive coverage and additional programs like Silver Sneakers, been hearing about that for a decade as well. It's finally available through this this program. Um, and, it, and some of those programs, like like Silver Sneakers, are not available under the FSBP high option. We're, we're not able to offer that. The main change that's happening this year for the, the Medicare Advantage Plus B plan, or the MAPD, is that there's a new limit for prescription out-of-pocket um, costs. Because technically on the medical side, you don't have any out-of-pocket costs. So um, with the MAPD, it's only prescription, and there's a limit, um, a, a new lower limit this year, which is $2,000 beginning in 2024. I'll also note that the $2,000 out-of-pocket limit for prescription drugs also applies to the new prescription drug plan, the PDP, for those in the high option. And that $2,000 limit is part of, not in addition to, the existing $5,000 out-of-pocket catastrophic max that I mentioned before. So. Similar protection under both of those Medicare options, 
the MAPD, um, just a very uh, different thing. It is also um, the FSBP Medicare Advantage plan. It's not a commercial Medicare Advantage plan. So you stay enrolled in Medicare Advantage, uh, I'm sorry, in FSBP. And then there's a separate number you can call um, on the the um, uh, retiree page, which we can include the link about that as well, so that people can opt into or if they want to opt out of that uh, Medicare Advantage plan. Perfect. And I, I know that this is a lot of information, um, but if you still want to learn more or if you are looking just to explore some things, uh, members can learn more about these in the past past or, and future podcast episodes. Uh, there's also information in the fall's new, fall newsletter, which should be sent out to members already. You should be receiving it soon if you haven't. Um, and there's a copy on our website, of course. Uh, so always be on the lookout for updates on our website um, at aspa.org. Um, events um, as well. And if you still are coming away from this and you have some questions, do not forget that we have all these webinars that Kyle is doing and he will be answering questions live for members. So check out our events page for that. And if you attend one of those and still have some questions, you can always call us or you can attend ASPA Live on November 30th, where we will be answering questions live for members. Super size episode that day. We, I yeah. have a feeling we will go past our typical 30 minutes. I think day. so too. <laughs> <laughs> well, Maddie, thank you very much. I think this was very helpful to our members. I appreciate you taking us through this. Um, and I'm looking forward to all that we have coming up for open season. I know. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm very excited and very excited that it's finally open season. Yes, uh, and and now we're now that it's here, we're going to be excited when it's done too. I think. exactly, but, uh, <laughs> it's going to be a busy busy time. So, uh, you know, for our members, for more information about open season, please visit apspaorg slash open season. Please also check out the snow the the show notes for additional details on the changes in programs we've discussed today and more. This has been Aspa Talks, a production of the American Foreign Service Protective Association. All information offered in this podcast is meant to be educational. The views expressed by the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily represent AFSPA. Should there be any discrepancy between information offered in this podcast and official plan documents for the Foreign Service Benefit Plan or the other products offered by AFSPA, the policy provisions will prevail. Thanks for listening and be sure to subscribe to AFSPA Talks to catch our next episode. Please rate and review us on your favorite podcast app and share your feedback with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram for at Ask the Cares. We'll talk again soon. Thanks for joining us this week on Ask the Talks. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss an episode. If you have any follow-up questions about the topics in this episode, join our Ask the Live Q&A session on the last Thursday of every month. We will be streaming live on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash AFSPA cares at 11 a.m. Eastern time to answer your questions. Thanks for listening.